up here at Acorn Fisheries. I've literally just turned up and Chappy over here is a 36 pounder. So before I even get a chance to set anything up, I'm gonna go take a look just to see what sort of fish sit within this complex. And then we're gonna have a little walk and uh, get the rods out. But um, it's raining, it's freezing, uh, the snow was cleared. It was absolutely sheeted with snow yesterday. Um, but yeah, the rain is really, really coming down now. So let's, uh, let's get out of the rain and go and have a look at this fish. started belting down and yeah I thought with the camera gear and everything I thought we're gonna get saturated in a minute I need to get tucked away and luckily where I'm at uh, peg free we've got this hut so I probably won't even set my bivy up I'm just gonna get my bed and my essentials in here and uh, my rods are literally just gonna be outside the front of the door so if they scream off I could get up just as quick and um, here we're protected from the rain and the wind but what are the chances we've just turned up and there's a 36 pounder in the net it's a three and a half acre lake high stock of fish it's the perfect little venue especially for winter time when you're not as confident you know the fish might not be as active and you want to get a bend in the rod now what you find is some lakes carp will switch on quicker than others, some lakes carp will scoff up all your bait and you'll be bagging up, especially this time of year as well, but more than likely it's going to be a lot harder and more than likely the fish aren't needing to eat as much, they're not as active, they're not as hungry. But apparently they have been scoffing up loads and loads of bait, they've been fishing well and top tip which I've been given from other anglers and the chap who works here is the carp are absolutely loving the maggots so we've got a few pints of maggots here i'm sort of off the right to where that fish has just been produced and uh, i'm feeling really really confident so i'm going to wait for this rain to die down just a little bit and then i'm going to brave it get the rods out and uh, get fishing Absolutely freezing. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we're all set up and the rain stops. But um, loads of activity going on, loads of fizzing. Oh, it just feels like I've been waiting for this for so long. I've got all three rods on spinner rigs. <clears throat> and the reason for that is I've always used spinners, Ronnie's, um, and I'm confident in those rigs. So I'm just sticking to what I'm confident in. And it feels like I've been waiting for this for so long because winter fishing, you don't get those signs as much as you normally would. You don't see the fizzing as much. You don't see indications. But since I've been here, I've had so much screaming at me to say, you're not gonna blank. <laughs> it just feels so exciting. The guy who had the 36 pounder, He's had another fish since, and it's basically just off of where the side of my swim is, where the fish are holding up. Well, some of the fish are holding up and feeding. So really confident on that spot. It's just over seven reps out. I'm fishing 10 foot rods, so just over seven reps out. Um, not far at all. And uh, it's, it's a solid bottom. I think most of the bottom in this lake is fairly solid. So. It's a good thing because you know wherever you cast, it's going to be really well presented. It's just exciting. Really exciting. So yeah, just chill out time now. I've just had some food. Two rods out. I've left the third one out just for the time being, partly because I'm, I'm just knackered. Feels like I've just been cold to the bone all day. And I just feel like just, I'm in no rush. It's Thursday. We're here till Sunday. So, I feel like I could just relax a little bit now. And yeah, keep you guys in, in the loop. But I think I need a nap. But I'm probably just going to get that third rod. Just going to have a little 10 minutes. Get that third rod set. And then get that out. And then we can just chill out. This is the first live on the uh, on the old OMC spinner. Oh my God! <laughs> oh come on! Come on!
my hands are so cold. But I've just woken up to my rod going. It wasn't really a scream or anything, it was just a quick savage liner really. And I've just opened my eyes to see Mark there going, Ashley, that's a bite. <laughs> so I've jumped out of bed onto the rod and I'm in. This is a massive confidence boost of this fish. Trying out a new rig with a twist, coming in at 24 pounds. Oh, look at this fish. What an absolute banger. Get in. Just show you the other side quick, just before we put her back. Got it on the OMC spinner rig with a slight change. I met Tom Stokes at the Big One show and I was really, really fascinated by his short booms that he uses on the Ronnie rig, which are only about sort of four or five inches. So I thought I'm gonna give that a go. Five inch, I was really nervous about it and gonna caught this one. What a stunning fish. Oh, beauty. Right, we'll get her back. Morning. Well, that was an adventurous night, wasn't it? A bit chilly this morning. Doesn't help being opposite the door, which we've left open, because knowing me, if I get a scream, I'll probably run through the door and end up hanging out the window or something. But uh, yeah, I'm knackered, but what a cracking night. First night down, one fish down. Yeah, buzzing, can't wait. We've still got two nights ahead of us, so really, really excited. Um, Mark had a take as well last night, but when it came in, it was foul hooked. So I think it I think it took the bait because it was a fat worm rig on the bottom. So took the bait possibly and it came out and then foul hooked it on the way out. Don't know, but fish are definitely active. Um, but I'm gonna get up probably going to reel the rods in earlier than I wanted to today. It's now about half seven. Um, reason being is I just want to make sure that my left rig is sorted and I'm going to relocate my right rig. I didn't get any activity on that uh, last night or, or since I've been here. And I'm going to make a move on that one. What I might do with the middle rod because this lake's fairly uniform all around. It's about seven foot deep all around. And, the weather is warming up, it's been really chilly, it's still cold, the wind's blowing, but it is getting a little bit warmer. So I'm tempted to put the middle rod on a one foot zig just off the bottom and stick it near my left side because there's three fish being produced off that side now. One being a 36 pounder, so they're obviously active over there and I'm just thinking if I could complement that spot with the zig off the bottom then Perhaps I'm in for a chance, but I am nervous because I'm, I'm new to zig fishing, never zig fished in my life, always watch videos about zig fishing, love the idea, but I, I guess it's all about building confidence. So you've got to start somewhere and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to make a start at this lake and see how we get on with it. But yeah, absolutely buzzing with that fish. What a stunning fish and on a new rig. So on the OMC spinner, size four Cassian hook, and um, with a five inch boom as well. I was really impressed with um, Tom Stokes's short booms. They're literally this big. And I thought, uh, seems too short to, to work, but he catches loads of fish on it. And the way he explained it being, you know, accurate when you want to get it right, sort of bang on, in, in certain little dips and spots and lakes. And then the whole point of fish not being that spooked with certain leads and things like that. So I thought I'd give it a go. 
and what a hook holds. Obviously, as soon as that fish has taken the bait, they're connecting straight with the lead. And it's just in the bottom left corner, right round here. Absolutely nailed. So yeah, I'm gonna brave it, get out in the cold, go sort myself out, and then we'll uh, get the rods reset and back into action. to show me how to tie my very first zig rig. It's only a foot zig, so I'm gonna have a zig a foot off the bottom. I'm really confident in my other rigs. We've just managed to get the rods out, so just left it for a little while, just watch the water. Got my left rod back on the spot where I had the 24 pounder last night. Just out over to my left, probably about seven wraps out. And now I found a really clear spot just off the island with my right hand rod. So, really confident on those two. Now, I've never fished zigs. This is the first zig rig I've ever tied. I've always watched videos on zigs and I'm trying to build my confidence in something new. So I thought, why not? So it's been quite a quiet day today, but I'm still feeling really, really optimistic about the session and more so confident in the, the spots and the rig choice because I've managed to speak to a couple of iconic people today by the off chance they're both here on the same day, um, one of which being the owner of the lake, which is Mark Bartlett. And to give it to Mark, he's given me the time of day I've managed to pick his brains and he's given me some confidence in what I'm doing. I asked Mark to just look, watch my rods for the time being just while I nip over to the tap shop to get some more maggots. And uh, Tom Mathers stood outside and equally for Tom, he's given me the time of day, let me pick his brains and uh, given me much more confidence in what I'm doing. So I'm really pleased with these two rods, fairly close together. And all I've been doing every 45 minutes every hour it's just putting a few spawns of maggot a little bit of boily crumb just over the top and uh, I'm probably about a rod length just off the margin going towards that island and when I was speaking to Tom he explained that you come probably seven to ten foot off the island and it is just really really flat as clear as anything very popular place for the fish to come swimming around the island hopefully snap up a little bit of the bait so just going to keep watching the water keep doing what i'm doing hopefully we can pull out another fish just as beautiful as the one we had last night
On the safe. Where are they today? Well, there we have it. Four in the morning. And we've got one in the net. On the zig. Well, I said I'll be back and hopefully with a fish. And that's what we've got. Only about 20 pound, nothing major. But to me, this fish is major because the very first carp I've ever caught on a zig. Only a foot off the bottom, bit of black foam. It's about half past four in the morning, so it's still pitch black. And just look at this fish. Oh, it's golden. There we go. Yeah, massive confidence booster. Night two down, fish two down. Two different methods. I've just been, every 45 minutes, every hour, just been spawning a bit of maggot out, a bit of crushed boilie. Nothing major, just keeping all of that, that attraction going in. And yeah, over the moon with this one, just can't believe it. Mouth is absolutely mint, there's not a mark on it. Show this other side and then we'll get her back. Get it. Absolutely buzzing. Right, we'll get her back and then we'll get that rod back on the spot. Well, the excitement hasn't finished. Seven o'clock. Mark's had liners all night. And uh, obviously got that common last night, which was my first fish on the Zig. And uh, my middle rod, which is the Zig, is just, bobbin's just dropped slightly, come back up and then dropped. So yeah, I've got no shoes on, no socks on, mud all over my feet. Uh, seems like it's going to be another good day. wake up this morning to a little bit more excitement um, but we're on the last day we've got the last night ahead of us today so it's our chance to finish with a bang now I had the first fish off the bottom on a pop-up and uh, just on a little sp spinner rig and the second fish my very first zig rig that I've tied um, just about a foot off the bottom so they're obviously on the move they're still active so the fact that I've caught one on my first zig I'm gonna keep at it um, practice makes perfect, so we're going to make another zig up and hopefully that will finish the session with a, uh, another 
fish or two. Um, so yeah, we're going to get to work, type some rigs and then get the rods back out. I'm also having to move slightly with my rod positioning because on my left nobody's in that swim and where I've been having fish is slightly out of my water into that swim. But just got to do the right thing. Someone's turned up here today, which I think they are. I'm just going to move back into my water because then you keep the other anglers happy and doing the right thing. So we're going to make a slight change and then go from there. So let's tie some rigs up and get the rods back out and uh, fingers crossed we finish with a bang. Well, it's been quite a quiet day today. Started off with a little bit of excitement. Middle rod was beeping off this morning, seven o'clock, on the dot. And I thought, do you know what? Today we're gonna to have it out again. And given the last couple of days, they're much better than I thought I would. It's been freezing cold. Winter time, the days are still short and yeah, I was just really, really optimistic about what was going to happen. So given the last couple of days, I've had the best time ever. Not only have I caught, but I've tried new rigs, I've tried new tactics, and my confidence has just gone from here through the roof. So if we don't have anything else, I'm, I'm still feeling pretty good about this session. And considering we've got so much more to come this year and in warmer times of the year, and yeah lots of other times that we're going to be catching you know i feel feel fine based on where we're at but it has been a quiet day the excitement didn't last long it fizzled out a little bit and yeah i don't think anyone else has had anything maybe one coming from the other side but that was early on this morning when i got a bit of activity myself and other than that it's just gone completely dead so i did reel in had a rethink of my tactics now, I had one on the zig, so I have kept a zig out there. I've also put another zig out on my second rod, slightly further up off the bottom, so I'm probably about one and a half foot to two foot. I did contemplate three foot deep, but then I thought to myself, I've had one close to the bottom. And after speaking to Mark and working out where they could be in the layers, you know, it's got to be between that sort of one to three foot of depth, maybe one to four foot of depth. So. I've stuck to the bottom and that's what I've done with two of my rod, rods. Now what I have done is on my third rod I just thought to myself I've had two fish already. If I don't have any more I've already got more than what I expected. So I'm going to make the most of the rest of the trip to just step out of my comfort zone a little bit more. You know I'm not a professional, I'm new to angling and I just want to keep advancing my knowledge in fishing and keep getting better and better. So I spoke to Mark about rigs and asked him what he uses, and the tactics and so on. And he mentioned that his, his go-to rig on many, many venues is the KD rig. And he taught me how to tie one. So I sat there, we tied a KD rig and the look of them are just so subtle. You can really see how it would how it would work in a situation when it's in the lake. And the way the, the hook is aggressively bending away from the hair. And if you pull the hair, the hook sort of almost jumps, sort of kicks back. It just, yeah, it just screamed out um, to me that that is a rig that I could really find useful in my own fishing. Whether it catches or not, that's another thing, but 
I know I've tied it well because I've done it with somebody who's who's used it for a lot of their own fishing for many years. I've felt the bottom out, done everything right. So if I don't catch, I'm blaming it on the fact that the fish aren't there, <laughs> not the fact that it's the first time tying that rig, which could be the case. But we're just gonna sit tight now. I've put enough bait in, just trickled small doses of bait, little bit of maggot, little bit of crushed boilie. So I'm gonna get my head down now. And fingers crossed, for the last night, we've got a sleepless night. Far, far makes the city look so bright. Cross your eyes and just stay tight. We have to go. Stay with me while we leave. Don't worry, just believe me. This journey will. Mark's just had a screamer. I'm gonna walk away from the situation. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, I was so buzzing for him. He's not had the best of luck since we've been here. His rod's just torn off, and unfortunately, he's caught a catfish. <laughs> I don't think he's very happy. How are you feeling? A little bit deflated. To be honest with you, I thought I had a 50, 60 pound cart on the way that was fighting, but no. What's that about? And look, I've taken all three rods out. No, that has taken all three rods out, and I'm left with a big mess. So yeah, I've got some of that, yeah. I am, uh, I'm going to leave you with that problem, I'm gutted for you, mate. That's right. Well, right. I'll have a look mate. See you later. See you, mate. For sake. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Hope you're saying good idea. There's 400 carp in this lake. Oh, I'll catch a moggy. Would you believe it? Don't believe it. Go, it's going back. Going back. Do you want to give it a kiss, Mark? Yeah, come on, mate. Kiss the catfish. <laughs> Need what? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. I need a cup of tea. I've got yes. cat slime all over me. It's <laughs> up my belly as well. Cat <laughs> shit, literally. At least you don't smell like cat. <laughs> Mind you, of course, it's just as bad. You haven't blanked. It's a good thing. Technically, no. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, there's something on that. It's got to be. There we go. That's on the zig, isn't it? Nothing. That's actually something crazy, something out there. Oh, we're there. I'm in. Oh, it's playing a bit funny, but I don't know. Oh, The last night, we're going out with a bang, and I think it's only about half past nine as well, and both of my other fish have been early hours of the morning, so I'm still really, really optimistic about tonight. But we've had a slight mix up with the rigs. Obviously the first fish was on a pop-up, the second fish was my very, very first zig. 
and the third one is coming on the zig as well but this time a little bit higher up off the bottom about one and a half two feet foot off the bottom oh, i'm just buzzing i'm so happy and look at this fish what a stunner there we go it's a beautiful fish let's look at the colors on that black foam couple of maggots on the top I used to look at zigs and think, how does that work? But it does. And I'm certainly putting it in the books as a yes for my go-to tactics on the lakes moving forwards. I'll just show you the other side and then we'll get her back. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Weighed in at 21 pounds on the nose. And yeah, I'm a happy boy. Let's get her back and hopefully we can make another one before we finish up the session. Well, that is the end of the session and what an amazing session it's been. I can honestly say that this has been one of the best trips that I've had in the last two years. Being away from the camera so much, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be sharing my journey with you all. So I'm not a professional. This is amateur carper and every time I go to the bank, I'm constantly trying to step out of my comfort zone. And that's exactly what we've done here. I've tried new rigs, tried new tactics. And I've really felt completely out of my comfort zone, but it's paid off and it just goes to show if you think about something for too long, thinking, oh, I don't know if that's gonna work or just give it a go. And that's exactly what I've done. I've tried Zigs, tried a KD rig, didn't catch on the KD rig, but for the first time of me ever tying a Zig and using it out in the lake, I've had two fish off of two different Zigs. So, I'm really proud to say that I've caught my first two zigs and uh, yeah my confidence with that sort of fishing has gone way up even in the colder months we've had a really challenging three days I think I was one out of maybe three people around the entire complex who caught so it has been really hard going we've had bad weather it's been cold windy miserable and I'm down to my last set of clothes as well so I'm glad that this is the last day and we're going to be heading home but I'm really pleased to say Acorn Fishery is an absolutely stunning complex and from what you've seen with me catching only three out of all of them carp that are in that lake, you can see the fish are just stunning. So for now, I'm going to reel the rods in, we're going to get packed up, we're going to head home. But if you've enjoyed what you've seen and you've enjoyed following my journey so far, please do subscribe hit the like button and if you've got any comments or questions they're all welcome so please do leave a comment down below for now i'm going to head off and we'll see you again on the bank sometime Stay.